Good morning. Building inclusive economies. So uh, we build solutions to inclusion in tech ecosystems around the world. And we do that through advising, workshops, um, consulting, training, uh, really working together with different regional economies, and some of you all actually in the audience here. Um, and so today we're gonna share just a little bit about what we've learned. So a couple of things that we learned is that the issues are universal. Um, the terminology um, around understanding what diversity inclusion means for a tech ecosystem, um, it's a global problem. Not just the terminology, but also the issues around creating inclusive tech ecosystems. We've seen, we live in San Francisco, we've been in Silicon Valley, um, we've seen the issues, uh, the same issues of lack of underrepresented people working in tech industry, lack of entrepreneurs receiving venture capital in almost every tech community we've been. Um, so the problems are universal. Another, pro another trend we've seen is that, that everyone knows what the problems are by now, um, but we have to focus on the solutions to move us forward. Um, and then we must design with inclusion for all. If we don't, we leave people out. Fourth is really looking at systemic problems and working hard to solve them. We have noticed a trend around um, doing real basic training around biases as the answer. And bias training in and of itself does not fix diversity and inclusion. You have to go deeper. You have to look at the systemic issues within your ecosystem and address those across the ecosystem. Uh, allyship is key. So we often see diversity and inclusion as that side project over there that other people are working on, but it's really the work inside all of us that we need to do together. Uh, and lastly, Build an ecosystem that's right for your local economy. And in other words, don't try to replicate Silicon Valley and Bay Area culture and investment practices. We've seen this over and over again that as we go across the world, people are looking at Silicon Valley as a template. And there's a lot that is right with that template, and there's also a lot that needs to change uh, in order to make that template useful for everyone. For example, I'm just gonna give you two examples. One is around investment. Right now, in, the, in all VC capital, of all VC capital, 95% goes to white and Asian men. That leaves 5% goes to everyone else. Women, uh, all ethnic and racial minorities, people with disabilities. That has to change, right? If you look at, specifically at black women, um, digital undivided, who I think is here today, did a study that showed that between 2009 and now, just 0.006% of all venture capital funding, 0.006% went to black women. Um, there's not even enough data around Latinx, Native Americans, people with disabilities to show um, where they stand there, but obviously it's less than 1%. Um, so that's, that's funding. Wayne and I live in San Francisco. When we look at the San Francisco local economy and how it's been affected by the tech industry and tech startups, housing costs have risen. Commercial rents have risen to the point where it's, it's, uh, it's leaving out um, underrepresented minorities. People are leaving. Uh, the culture and the rich culture of San Francisco is leaving San Francisco. In 1970, 13.4% uh, were African Americans, now it's 6%. Uh, and that is happening for all underrepresented minorities. Uh, and the same as well when we look at the commercial rents, it's actually pushing small businesses out. So when you're building a local economy, you have to be thinking about the next 25 years. What is that going to look like? And how are you going to be how are you going to plan for diversity and inclusion across your ecosystem for the next 25 years and obviously beyond? And we've been seeing that across the board in other cities, communities. So what are some solutions um, to that? And so basically, we put together some some design principles for inclusive entrepreneurship economy. Um, one. You want to foster entrepreneurship to solve local or regional issues with a creative and inclusive approach. Um, two, you want to learn from your own strengths that drives in your local uh, ecosystem. Um, and often, especially when, in terms of venture capital and entrepreneurship, we often see a lot of local investors um, in different ecosystems try to invest with the same trends that they see in other markets, and we advise strongly against that.
Three is have funding and mentoring infrastructure to support rapidly growing businesses and um, build those for all types of founders. Four, build with a future in mind and make sure that it's adaptable to the growing, the, to the changing future. Listen to local entrepreneurs and help them co-develop community strategies. And lastly, build an inclusive entrepreneurship economy that is good for your local economy, your local environment, and your local community. One that's built upon the rich cultures and the rich economy that you've already built, that you've already created. So this is our ecosystem approach. Um, this is how we look at ecosystems, particularly in the tech industry. Uh, we, we look at entrepreneurship and all that is, uh, that all the supports entrepreneurship, the workplace in the tech industry, uh, education, policy, storytelling and media, and then the ecosystem builders themselves as well. Create your own map of your ecosystem and then work to, gr to build that in an inclusive way. If there are gaps, it won't work for everyone. Now, we all come from different backgrounds, and, and this is a global economy, and, and Kaufman and Andy and Philip and the team have done a great job of, of curating this, uh, you all from around the world. But so I'm going to review uh, quickly some basic framework of a language uh, to get everyone on the same page. Um, we're talking about the, um, diversity. Diversity is bringing humans with different backgrounds to the table. Um, and I want to emphasize the word humans. Uh, we got to get beyond um, looking at people by a single identity, whether it's their gender, race, or color of their skin. Inclusion is inviting humans to speak and encouraging them to lead. It's not enough to invite people to the table. You have to, you have to encourage them to lead at that table. So in the tech industry, like in many industries and, and yours as well, there are many people who are underrepresented or face barriers in discrimination. Women and non-binary people, so uh, that's a term uh, non-binary that many of you know and some uh, for the rest of us. Non-binary means that you don't necessarily identify as man or woman. There's a, there's a gray area in between. Uh, racial and ethnic minorities, LGBTQIA, people with disabilities, veterans. In the tech industry, anybody over 35 is also underrepresented. We're very biased toward youth in the tech industry, and many others. Um, and as Wayne said, keep in mind that many people are intersectional, so uh, maybe many or all of these at the same time. Uh, there's always someone with less privilege than us. Um, and thinking about this whole room, we have privilege in being in this room, right? Um, so think about how you use that privilege to create change. So why are people underrepresented? Uh, just briefly, uh, people are underrepresented because of historical privilege and oppression, uh, because of his systemic inequities, because of personal biases, and because of the culture, both company culture, workforce culture, and popular culture as well. These are things I can actually feel in the audience. People started to get uncomfortable when I started talking about this. Um, is, is, these are hard subjects. And I, we just want to acknowledge them so that we can build solutions to counter them, okay? So equity. Equity is working to promote justice and fairness while addressing historical privilege and oppression within our society. And previously, we haven't always talked about diversity, inclusion, and equity. But equity is, I strongly believe, is what we all need to be looking at internally is how can we make, um, uh, how can we undo some of the wrong that has been happening historically in our, in our society? And as we're here uh, working on the, eco the um, ecosystem goals, I strongly agree, and, uh, and it's fitting that inclusion is, is number one. But I also dare to say that if we don't get inclusion right, we won't get the rest of the ecosystem goals right as well. Lastly, we want to leave you with this point. A successful entrepreneurship ecosystem promotes diversity, fosters inclusion, and improves equity for everyone. Thank you.